Hello my friends and welcome. It was the biggest Russian attack on Ukraine since the beginning of the war. We're not speaking about the ground attack but the aerial attack on many of the Ukrainian cities. Russia used the cruise missiles, ballistic missiles and many of the drones. Totally Ukrainian air defense counted 158 of the targets spotted in the skies of the Ukrainian airspace. This attack is outstanding and that is why we are speaking about it at the very beginning of this video. Russia attack Kherson, Zaporizhia, Dnipro, Kharkiv, Kiev, Cherkasy and the village nearby, Lviv and many of the other cities. Unfortunately, there are many of the casualties between 20 and 30 people reported for this hour. Plus many more wounded people. All of them are civilians and all of the infrastructure that was targeted is the civilian one. This morning I shared all of the information about the Russian attacks on my telegram channel. So for example, this is the residential building in Odessa. This is the mall in the Dnipro city. As you can see, it's completely demolished. I was in this mall many of the times since I used to work in the Dnipro city. In Dnipro city, the maternity hospital was targeted and it's been reported about several of the casualties over there. It's just crazy what Russia is doing in Ukraine. Later on, there were more air sirens and Smila village in Cherkasy Oblast was also targeted. Several people got wounds in the private sector in one of the villages. Many people People say that it was some sort of the revenge from the Russian side for their big landing ship that they lost in Feodosia port of Crimea, but I don't think so. They were planning the separation for a very long time, luckily they haven't used caliber cruise missiles which they usually launch from the Black Sea. Because of the Ukrainian attacks on the Russian Black Sea Marine Fleet, Russia is forced to move their ships out of their usual launching spots near to Sevastopol, for example. So now they are located in Novorossiysk. All of the rest they have used today, the Soviet-made missiles and the modern-day hypersonic ballistic missiles. I remember how around one month ago I read the article from the Times how Kiev is the safe place and today I just saw the missile hit that building in Kiev city. Luckily that building wasn't yet built so there were no families living in their apartments but the devastation was caused to that building. It means that Kiev isn't safe place to live for civilians. As any kind of the other settlement in Ukraine, any kind of the village, any kind of the city is under the huge threat of being attacked by the Russian missiles or drones. Especially bordering settlements with the Russian controlled territory, for example Kherson or maybe even Odessa. It is very often that Russia attacks those places. So I think after all the main objective of Putin was not the revenge for the ship but to frighten Ukrainians that Russia is still crazy enough to target all of the Ukrainian cities. Guys, here on a video you may see the Russian cruise missile which fires some of the flashes on the way. Those flashes are used as the defense for the airplanes usually, but Russia uses those flashes in their cruise missiles. It makes the job for the Ukrainian air defense more difficult, especially for the Ukrainian manpads like Stinger or Igla. So then the Russian cruise missile is getting closer to the target it starts to launch those flashes on the way, that is how it minimizes the risk of being targeted by man pads mostly. But the Patriot system or NASAMS may still target this missile and today Ukraine obviously shut down many of those. 87 of the cruise missiles plus 27 of the drones were hit by Ukrainian air defense. The rest unfortunately reached their targets, but again, no military infrastructure was targeted. Coincidentally, the same day on 29th of December 1940, Nazi Germany launched a huge bombing of the London city. It was the biggest one. By that time, obviously, the air defense was not so developed as today. So without the air defense, Ukraine would suffer the same result as the London city faced 
84 years ago. So you see that the Nazi style continues even today. Russia even attacked the local church in Odessa, so the selling was hit and went on the floor. Luckily, the rest of the church is okay. And the priest was lucky to stay alive. One of the missiles went to Polish territory, hitting the ground. Luckily, no one was hurt, but locals report about the whistle and explosion. The president of Poland, Andrzej Duda, called for a emergency meeting, but I guess they will not do anything with that. It's not the first time that the Russian missile penetrates the NATO airspace. After today's Russian strike on Ukraine, the President of the United States, Joe Biden, calls for immediate support of Ukraine with the military help that was promised before. We are speaking about $61 billion for the weaponry program. It seems like we start to forget what the Russian regime really is. Putin wants to achieve his goals by any means. It's already happened in the history. When he started the war in Chechnya, the second war, and totally demolished the capital city of Grozny. The same stuff he wants to do with the Ukrainian cities. More air defense systems and ammunition for them. Luckily, there are many more countries today who say that, okay, we'll supply more air defense missiles to Ukraine for them to be ready to withstand against the Russian aerial attacks. And guys who are watching me from the allied country with Ukraine, thank you so much for your support of Ukraine. Without your help, Ukraine would be totally devastated today, but Ukraine shut down the majority of the Russian missiles, like 80% of them, avoiding possibly the biggest disaster in Ukraine. So hopefully after vacations, let's say Congress and the House of Representatives will agree on the help towards Ukraine. Because we need it yesterday. Actually, if we do not obtain it this winter, it means that Ukraine isn't capable for the summer or spring assault against the Russian army, unfortunately. Okay, now let's go to the front lines update because we have some of those, luckily, in favor of Ukraine. For example, today there are some of the changes in Bogdanovka area where Russia advanced yesterday and today Ukraine was able to repel the Russian forces back. Still, the gray area was expanded, but nevertheless, the fighting is going and Ukraine fights back. So let's go to the timeline. It was yesterday and it is today again, yesterday and today. So Ukraine was able to send their forces to this forest line and the fight is ongoing just in this area. The other change is happening in the Kupensk region. So let's go to this place place near to Orlanka and Yahin. There Ukraine also advanced a lot, so it was yesterday and it is today quite far away. Now the Ukrainian army has even the potential to go to Orlanka and there is the very important crossroad over here. President Zelensky today recorded the address to the people from Avdivka. He was planning this trip since yesterday and he was really close to the front lines around 1.9 kilometers, so almost 2 kilometers away from the Russian control positions. He was standing at the only supply road which Ukrainian army uses to supply our forces in Avdivka. All of the goods, ammunition, etc. goes through this road from Orlivka to Avdivka and President Zelensky was staying there near to the industrial factory in this place. So Avdivka still holds its under Ukrainian control. Russian attack attempts all break against the Ukrainian defense in the place. How long it might continue, no one knows. Uh, Valery Zaluzhny, the general commander of the Ukrainian army, told that in a couple of months or maybe in three months, Russia has the chances to occupy Avdivka city. But the main goal for Ukraine is to save those guys, to save Ukrainian soldiers. Yes, the ground is still very important and the Ukrainian army does everything to secure it. But how can you secure it without your soldiers being alive and well fighting against the Russian army? Just a couple of words about the big Russian landing ship, which they lost three days ago. Well, the Russian officials together with Roskomnadzor and the Russian cyber police try to eliminate all of the posts which remind that Russia lost their ship together with a crew. 
many of the news around the ship were removed from the internet and from the main media sources. But you know what, they are unable to hide this information, especially on Telegram. And that's why I also use Telegram, I have my own group over there, and I'll share the link in the video description just below, so if you subscribe for me on Telegram, I would be very grateful for you. And basically, it doesn't obey to the government order or something like that, so I am free to use my Telegram and I may post there everything I want. So for example, here we have the Russian news that Russia lost 74 sailors on the big landing ship that was attacked by Ukraine and this article has already been removed by the Russian officials. And here is the face of the Russian pilot who was shut down not long time ago in Ukrainian airspace. He was flying Suhoi 34 bomber. Judging on his photo, it seems like he saw his own destiny there. And by the time I am recording this video, there are some of the Kabumsk in Bransk and Belgorod. This is the Russian territory. Hmm, strange what happened there. Well, as usual, Ukraine doesn't attack the Ukrainian civilian infrastructure. It only happens if Russia tries to shut down the Ukrainian drones, for example, using the electronic warfare. If you check the list of the Ukrainian attacks, you using the drones on the Russian territory, you'll not find the civilian casualties. The Ukrainian aim is the military infrastructure of the Russian army. There was the information shared this afternoon that Ukraine shut down Tupolev 22M3, the Russian strategic bomber, but actually it's not correct. It is simply not possible, unfortunately, because those airplanes fire their cruise missiles thousand kilometers away from the Ukrainian border. Sources say that they still are looking to confirm this information, but I think that this information is misleading or basically fake. The similar stuff goes for the Ukrainian F-16. Some of the sources say that Ukraine has already obtained them, but Ukrainian officials today stated that Ukraine is still in lack of those military airplanes. Hopefully we're gonna receive them in a couple of months. Yes, guys, it's kind of the depressed video today, but nevertheless, you saw the advantage of the Ukrainian army on the front lines. Russia is still unable to get lots of the ground as they did at the beginning of the last year. And probably that is why Putin is very angry about it, enabling to achieve his goals, for example, in Avdivka, and they start to bomb Ukrainian cities. And sadly, I think that those kind of the attacks might repeat in the nearby future. Well, at least Russia has all of the resources for it, and Ukraine is still unable to eliminate the threat from the Russian strategic aviation, because their airfields are located really far away from the Ukrainian border, and we don't have the tools to target them. Ukraine tried to do it in the Engels airfield last year, but since that time, Russia moved their airplanes even further. They usually launch their cruise missiles from the Caspian Sea, so really far away from Ukraine. No any air defense system is capable to reach them over there as well as the fighter jets because to target the Russian airplanes have to go to the Russian controlled airspace with lots of the air defense for example in Rostov Oblast. That's why even F-16s would not change the situation with the Russian aerial attacks. What they might do is to target the cruise missiles which Russia launched directly. Well hopefully Ukraine will receive lots of the more support from our allies because it's one more marker that Russia is just crazy in attacking Ukrainian territory and the civilized world should do something with it. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video, by doing so you help a lot to my channel. Also, if you want to support my job, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. Thank you so much for your awesome support. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.